My life right now is just video meetings. You know, you have this pressure to be camera ready. Like you're on the screen for meetings all day at work. And then even after work, you gotta look presentable for your friend call. Or, you know, be alert for your family call. Actually, there's intense pressure to be camera ready. Back when this all felt new, I actually pointed the camera at myself and recorded a time capsule. Some predictions I had were not correct. So the latest we have officially is that the office will be closed for four weeks, but my best estimate is that it probably will be closer to two months. Not long after I filmed that time capsule, we started production on the very first episode of Christine vs. Work. That was, that was when we were shooting this on my phone and the Wi-Fi is like, I don't know, everything looks really, I look weird. My hair's so short. And in that episode, I talked to Rachel Kosser. She's a former Boston ballet dancer turned professional presence coach. And I'm like, well, what are the tips? How am I supposed to carry myself on these video calls? You don't have to be stoic, non-moving robots. It just, it's not interesting. <laughs> Here we are a year later and I'm wondering, does virtual presence still matter? Probably yes, but you know, as we've been in video calls and meetings and been fatigued all this time, it's like, I think my standards have been slipping a little bit. We are all video stars in our meetings now. Question is, how do we make the most of our on-screen time? I decided to check back in with Rachel. Let's see what she has to say one year later. You know, the, the wildest thing is that we were all collectively thrown into this virtual world, like simultaneously. As we found, right, there's this skills gap and, and that's both the technology awareness of the platforms we're using and then also what we can do with our, with our physicality. Why does virtual presence still really matter like a year into this? When everything aligns to send an impression of, of confidence and professionalism, it also sets you up to be more energized, more focused, more articulate. Conversely, if they're off, they really do detract from your audience's impression of you from the get-go. Fine, I get it. We shouldn't slouch and slurp. We should care about virtual presence. Got it. What has changed since last March and what hasn't? The thing that's most amazing to me in the segment that we did, I think it was like a week into the stay at home order here in the US, a lot of what we said was very much on point. We were actually right a year ago. So here's a quick recap. You wanna show your physicality. So that means being about three feet away from the camera so people can see most of you and your gestures. You wanna come across as human not a robot. You want to be fully engaged in a meeting? Be on camera, but turn your selfie view off. I love this tip. This way you're not kind of distracted the whole time sort of glancing at yourself, and instead you're fully focused on everyone else in the room. Lastly, if you have a few moments before your call, do some physical anchoring exercises to refresh your body and mind. And reach up to the sky with our hands, open them to the side how wide and how much space can you take up? And now we're gonna do tiny little circles with our palms. Now that we have the physicality down, time for the technology. Okay, these might seem super obvious, but let's go through them. Consider this a virtual presence checkup for you and also for me. Lay it on me, Rachel. So Rachel, be honest. What do you think of my setup on this call? So I think your setup is decent. I think there are a couple <laughs> of things. <laughs> Yes, let's do it, let's do it. <laughs> a couple of things. Right now we're getting a little bit more space, negative space than we need between the top of your head and the outer limit of that screen. You see less of me and you see less of my gestures. Okay, so yes. By adjusting that, right, so now I see more of Christine. And then the other thing is that you, because you have a window, we're getting like an orb-like presence. <laughs> in your frame, which means that the sharpness of you is minimized. Okay, so I have that, and then let me see if I can get the ring light. This is real, folks. I didn't expect this. 
So in that clip, I'm running out to go grab my ring light from across the room. And then Rachel has a huge one, which I super love. But you can also use natural light, which is what I have here. I'm not using a ring light right now, and you can see me just fine. From a lighting perspective, it's much improved. It's easier for me to see your humanity. Is it working? I know that there are big fans of virtual backgrounds out there, but Rachel recommends against them and going real. Right, if the goal is to connect human to human, like let's be real and let's not add these layers of complexity that really, you know, they just add more distraction. With that advice, if you need to use a virtual background for whatever reason, make sure you're in front of a plain, flat, solid background. Okay. Let's talk about those times when you really need to be off camera during a meeting. I typically go into meetings with my camera on and I like to see everybody, but once in a while there's like, you know, life is happening and for whatever reason, I just don't really want my camera on, but I'm still engaged. What do I do if someone calls me out on it or they, you know, joke about it? It's like, I don't want to deal with this. How do you address that? I would just pop into the chat like, hey, everyone, you know, it, it's great to be here. I just wanted to let you know for this meeting, I'm going to keep my camera off. It immediately makes the implicit explicit, right? So name it and claim it. No one's going to be wondering, oh, well, is, you know, is Christine in the car right now? Like, is she, did she go somewhere else? And she's, in, you know, with a different background and no one, it's a waste of everyone's time. Okay, let's recap the setup. Here's your checklist. There we go. Jiggies away. Oh, just right. Okay. Straighten that out. Here's my here's my expression. I can see. Work with what you got. Optimize it. And I don't know. I think this looks much better, right? Man, I really miss the office. And seeing that time capsule from a year ago. Oof. That brought a lot of feelings back, you know? So I was one of the last people in the office. I cleaned up everything, made sure nothing was going to be infested with raccoons by the time we got back. Leaving the office was like packing up for a trip to the moon. Sometimes I do feel like I'm alone on the moon, in my space, in my apartment. But hey, those guys on the moon, they had to figure it out. Voice check, please. We'd like it to come left about uh, five degrees, over. Oh, geez, that's great. Is the lighting halfway decent? Yes, indeed. Beautiful, just beautiful. If you're still watching, one, thank you. Um, but two, I'm really curious. Like, what do you want me to explore? Like, what problems do you have at work? I'd love to solve them. Please leave a comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you have any other ideas, throw them my way. All right. Peace out.